Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. And welcome to my stop on the Peekaboo Hop and Giveaway with Whimsy Stamps. Each stop in the hop is sharing a project featuring the Whimsy Stamps Peekaboo 3 die. Plus there'll be lots of other products that I'll talk about in my video and the other participants will talk about in theirs. Before I tell you any more about the hop, I want to get started on my project. So you can see that I am using Canson XL watercolor card. So I will be painting these images that I stamp out. And I am using the Enjoy the Little Things stamp set. I think this poppy is absolutely beautiful. And then of course I'm also using the Peekaboo Window 3 die. Peekaboo 3. And I think it's such a sweet die. I've actually had this die in my stash for a little while. And to be honest, I've struggled to find a way to use it that pleased me. So this actually stretched me a little bit. And yeah, I love my card in the end, but we'll talk about some of the some of the difficulties that I had um, along the way. And really there was only only one which was deciding the the cardstock that I was gonna use or the pattern paper, but I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Let me keep going. <laughs> Um, so I have used my die as kind of a viewfinder to kind of determine placement of the stamped images and then again to assess if I got them in the right place and that type of thing. Um, now I showed it a little bit and I show it kind of as I go, but I did this many, many times just to make sure my alignment was right and everything was placed well where I wanted it to be and in a way that it would show through those windows correctly. So... And you know what, now that I'm thinking about it and talking to you about it, you know, that's that's a bit of precision that my brain doesn't usually like when I'm crafting. Maybe that's a reason why I've struggled with it too. But in any case, I'm glad that I was challenged to use this one and I love this card in the end. So as I mentioned, I am watercoloring this project. I'm using my new to me Gonzai Tombi watercolor palette. I think this is a 36. They have different um, different versions of this same palette. I think this one is 36. So I am just doing, it's, it's a wet on wet technique. What you didn't see was that I sprayed my panel with my little um, water sprayer before I started putting pigment down. And of course you have to loosen up the pigments with water before you can use them. So wet on wet. And I am just laying down a wash of color. Uh, it's kind of a reddy orange and then I bring in the yellow at the tips and then I come back with a little more um, of the deeper red at the base of each flower petal and I just keep doing that adding layers making sure everything is blended nicely and then I add some of the darker red to the tips as well as kind of to the edges where, where the edges show and they don't show on each of the petals so but I had a lot of fun painting this I those colors are right in my wheelhouse. The warm end of the of the rainbow or the color spectrum is just my happy place. So this kind of orangey red and the yellows and then the deeper red, yeah, that just makes my heart happy. And even the green, to me this is a warmer green. It's not one of the cooler greens, which I like both. Green is one of my favorite colors. But just the warmth, and I don't know, I mean it's not been an incredibly cold winter here in North Carolina but I'm just kind of over cold. So I was just really embracing this, this warm color palette. Now I also painted in the stems as well as the grass with that bright happy green and this is the finished panel. I used the, um, well let me, let me talk about what's on the screen. So this is one of the areas where I struggled with, with this dye because the orange didn't work, the yellow didn't work, the blue didn't work, but the solid that solid kind of summer summer sun yellow works perfectly. And I also had out a red and a green solid um, sheet of cardstock that I was going to try as well. But the yellow just made the, everything else pop. So that was what I chose. Now you saw that I actually took the darker, um, what is it, the Sharpie, the black Sharpie to all of my edges of all the image, just to kind of images, just to make them pop. And then here I am using a sheet of acetate from this Calls for Confetti. It's a nice sturdy acetate and I wanted to make sure that I don't lose any of my bits. So I wanted to make sure that everything stays in place. And you can see that it has that protective sheet on it. Not all acetate comes with a protective sheet, 
but I definitely appreciate that. So I peeled it off and I stuck it down over my, um, well, it was a, a dry adhesive, a tape adhesive, because you want something really strong that's going to hold all your parts together. And then when you make your shaker well, which is what I'm doing here, if, if you're using adhesive tape, whatever it is you're using, you want to make sure that your, your, your ends are butted up together. You don't want any open seams at all. Otherwise, you're going to lose your shaker bits. And so I created all of my wells with, with the double-sided foam tape. And then I started to put my shaker bits down. And then I realized I needed to pull off all that release paper or I was going to be shaking things around and getting everything stuck on the tape. Yeah, so I pulled off the release paper <laughs> so that all of the adhesive is showing. And then I put in my beautiful shaker bits from this Calls for Confetti. I have the Sparkle Gems diamonds on the right hand side where all of the circles are and then I have the prism confetti um, in the larger window and I think they're absolutely stunning as I've said before and then you saw me seal up the back with another sheet of kind of a lesser quality um, acetate and then I used some dry adhesive as well as some liquid adhesive to glue the the watercolor panel to the shaker panel and then I put the whole thing together onto the card base again with some liquid glue and it is just coming together so lovely and I'm so glad that I stuck with just that yellow I, I say just but I don't know may maybe that's what I've done in the past is I've tried to use something patterned and it just didn't click in my brain I don't know but you can see that I've also added a sentiment on there and that is my card but as always, I tend to forget about the hop details. So let me tell you, <laughs> there is a hundred dollar giveaway at stake here. So you guys want to make sure that you hop along to each stop on the hop, because when you leave comments, when you like subscribe, all those things, you're getting yourself in the running for a hundred dollar gift card from Whimsy Stamps online shop. And of course it's sponsored by Whimsy. We'll be picking one winner at random via YouTube random comment picker. So make sure you comment, leave a you comment, subscribe, and then come back because you're going to want to check back for the winner. So all the rest of the details will be downstairs. The end date, the start date, where you'll find the winner, all of that will be downstairs in my description box. So guys, thanks so much for stopping by and spending some time with me at my stop on the peekaboo hop <laughs> for whimsy stamps. This has been Nancy, the handy scandy. Mwah, I'm out.